Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your new suggestions. This one having to do with a one-off. Apparently a monster that was encountered somewhere there in England back in the early 1900s. And it was seen, it was actually killed as well. But it basically hasn't come out afterwards when it comes to any other variations of its species. Still though, definitely a frightening experience for those that encountered it. And who knows, maybe it's still out there somewhere, some other parts of its clan and so on. But at least up until this very day, there's still just been this one single one-off. But it is a variation of a very common vermin found throughout the entire world. And in fact, you're looking at a representation of it now. It has a very unique name too. It's known as the Peel Street Monster. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating but brief information associated with this cryptid. So what was this Peel Street Monster? Again, I say was because for all indications, it doesn't seem to have any other existence, at least as of now. Well, apparently, it was a rodent-like animal that was found there in England, specifically in an area called Wolverhampton. And then if you wanted to get even more specific, it was found in an area between Peel Street and then Bricklin Street. That's essentially why it's called the Peel Street Monster, because that's essentially where it was found. First off, its physical characteristics. Think of your average rat, rodent, mouse, and so on but hugely oversized. You know how in the Mario games, whenever he gets that mushroom, all of a sudden he's much bigger? Imagine something like this. Although it's hard to indicate like how large it was, because even looking at one of the past articles that talked about it, there was no physical description into its size. But considering what it could have been misconstrued as, which is a Kuwaiti, hope I'm saying that correctly, a Kuwaiti, those things can grow nearly up to four feet in length. That'll give you an idea of how big this rodent-like creature was. So imagine your average mouse, those vermin that you see maybe throughout your house, throughout your farm, and so on. Imagine something like that, much larger, maybe even up to four feet in total length, and that's essentially what you have here. But otherwise, like in terms of its ears, its eyes, maybe even its fur and so on, all indications point that it was just like any other rodent. Maybe it even had one of those very long tails and so on. Those rodents sure are meant and designed to last through so much. I mean, through the heat, through the cold, through hunger, through famine, through lots of food. It doesn't matter. These rats and vermins, they're one of the most adaptable creatures out there. So you could totally imagine that this creature, this Peel Street monster, was the same as well. And for all indications, it did seem like it was actually out there, lasting a good while, almost in isolation, almost as if it was perfectly camouflaged and hidden from the population there in Wolverton, Hampton, at least until one fateful day. So apparently this occurred, this incident occurred in the winter of 1933, maybe even 1934. That's when this monster was attacking several children. Who knows why it ended up trying to attack these children? It could be that it was on its last resort when it came to famine. You know, at a certain point, like when certain animals just don't have anything to eat, they're going to resort to attacking humans. So maybe this thing was doing this as well. It was attacking them. It was biting them. This seemed, based on the article I was reading, it made it seem like it was happening on a continuous basis. Like it was just sudden. Like it was just happening and it was occurring over several days. And then when that happened, that's when finally the, the this, this Peel Street monster met its match. And that was with a 17-year-old resident, a guy by the name of George Goodhead. He apparently was right there near Bricklin Street near some ground that was considered waste ground. And then after he saw this creature uh, being able, you know, attacking children, he tracked it down and then confronted it. He actually yelled at it. These were exact words. He said, I shouted and the thing turned on me. It crouched, its eyes bulging, and then it leaped like lightning. Fortunately, George had the wherewithal to have an actual brick with him. And as soon as this thing leapt at him, he struck it with the brick and then apparently did it 
either on the head or on the throat of the creature. This was enough to cause this Peel Street monster to fall to the ground. It wasn't necessarily dead at that point, but instead it was still twitching. But there was so much calamity uh, that at that point, People started gathering around. They obviously saw that this could have been the actual creature, the one that was apparently attacking a lot of children before. And so they started attacking it. They started hitting it. They started kicking it until it was just outright dead. And then that was it. That was the existence, short but brief, when it comes to the encounter of this Peel Street monster. Now, I was mentioning earlier that there was some misinterpretations, like it could have been associated with a Kuwaiti. It could have been even something else, maybe even a hairless raccoon. I was reading about another article mentioning that as well. But the thing that makes this so fascinating, the idea that this could be its own special type of cryptid is this. Once the creature was dead, it was examined. It was examined not just by vets, who you would think would be able to identify it as any natural creature, right? But it was also examined by taxidermists and it was examined by naturalists or naturalists. So all of those three sectors looking at this creature, having plenty of time to do so now that it's dead, and none of them could distinguish what it was, could truly state without a doubt what type of creature it was. Doesn't that make you scratch your head like almost in amazement? It makes you wonder if this was truly something else, some other type of cryptid or monster that just happened to look like an oversized rat, like the closest comparison, but it wasn't. It was completely different than that type of creature and any other type of creature that these three sectors had come across. There was even the suggestion that it could have been something involving a variation of an anteater. But still, nothing uh, could come out in terms of 100% confirmation. And I don't know exactly what happened to this creature, like in terms of its body or where it was placed, because it just hasn't been found any day anywhere else. There would have been a good chance maybe to put it into some type of formaldehyde or somewhere else, something to keep it preserved. Talk about a good way to examine it. This happened in the 1930s, even today. Imagine examining it in close inspection, um, even to this day, to see what it was. But no, whatever happened to the body, most likely it was just either thrown away in the trash or buried somewhere. Who knows? But that's essentially it. That was the last of this Peel Street monster. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with this creature, this one-off, as I was mentioning earlier. Who knows how long it was before around that area there in Wolverhampton, England. But once it decided to attack those children, that's when it essentially met its maker. But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. What about those of you there in that area, in that Wolverhampton, England, specifically the Peel Street Brickland Street area. Maybe if you grew up there or knew other family members that did so, I'd love to hear what your comments are on the local level as well. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.